Good morning. I've uh, been asked to talk a little bit about the Britannia project that uh, we're engaged in. And uh, just uh, having come up from the shepherd yard, the Neptune yard, where we're uh, putting in the blade plant, uh, that's really kind of the starting point on this. The engineering's been going on for the last two and a half years. Uh, this will be the largest wind turbine to date. Uh, uh, the blade plant uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, there to receive the plug that we've made in Germany for a 72 meter blade that'll weigh 30 tons. And uh, when the plug gets over here with the plant being ready in, uh, in the fourth quarter of this year, we'll start to make the mold and from that, we can start to produce the first blades that will go in testing at NAREC and Blythe. So that's kind of the process that, uh, that kicks off the whole manufacturing side of this effort. Uh, that first building will have a capacity of about 20 to 25 blade sets per year, so 60 to 75 blades per year. And there's enough land there to be able to expand it on out to about 100 uh, turbines per year, 100 uh, blade sets per year. Uh, at that point, that, that location should have upwards of 500 employees. And uh, the, the blades are pretty sophisticated composite structures with uh, carbon fiber uh, spars. Uh, uh, the, the forces on the blade are formidable, so the structural design of that is, is pretty much at the limit of where you can go with, uh, with a, a blade of that type. The, uh, <clears throat> the machine itself has a drivetrain that's 65 tons, so what's on top of the tower is 500 tons, uh, including the rotor. Uh, uh, the whole uh, machine from top to the ocean floor is 2,200 tons. It's kind of hard to get your mind around what that means, but just, uh, it's a lot of steel. <laughs> uh, the, uh, the reason you go to that scale is that ultimately the business is one of providing electrons at the, the lowest possible cost. And uh, the industry has been limited so far by being able to scale up drivetrains. Conventional drivetrains, once you go above one and a half or two megawatts, start to go up exponentially in terms of their mass. And with the, uh, with the design that we have, uh, that uh, we actually introduced with a Liberty turbine three years ago uh, in the US, we're able to scale and the power to weight ratio remains uh, constant as, as you get up. So in offshore, you need to be very, very large because about two thirds, well about two thirds is too much, about 40% uh, of the investment is in the foundation and, and the installation. And uh, the more power you can get out of that investment, uh, that's how you make, make the economics work. Uh, that machine and, and the kind of wind regime that you have uh, in the coast, uh, coastal areas will uh, provide uh, about 35 million kilowatt hours a year per machine. <clears throat> and that number doesn't mean a whole lot until you convert it into what it means if you were to have to burn oil to make the same amount of electricity. So over the lifetime of, of the machine, it's, it's got a 30-year design life. Now, whether it lasts that long, we'll have to see, but that's, that's a design life. Over that lifetime, that amount of electricity would be equivalent to, if you see the image of a super tanker, that's about 2 million barrels. This machine would be about 1.9 million barrels. Over, over that uh, period of time. 